let's do some celebration crafting, shall we? Welcome to part one of Celebration Club. All eight cards we're making in this mini series are going to be based on free products that you can earn. A couple days ago, I went through this entire celebration brochure. If you missed it, just look me up here. You're already on my channel. My name's Kimberly Smith. I'm the paper chef. And when you spend $50 on my Stampin' Up! store, you can earn these products that I'm going to be featuring. So you can earn, when you spend $50, to the watercolor melon stamp set, which we're going to work with today. You can earn the heartfelt hellos stamp set. And you can earn the Sunny Days Designer Series paper. So, I'm not sure because I'm, I think I might even like, you know, change it up. Let me see. I'm not sure. I'm thinking it'd be cool to use some like leftover papers just because I'm really low. I'm waiting for the next little series of papers. So, I think we might, we might see what we can do. But this is the celebration packet that you're going to be taking out and using. And I'm doing a designer series paper share as well. So inside this packet, you have your designer series paper. You have the die cut pieces you need. You have your card bases. You have packaging items, et cetera, et cetera. I'll show you the whole celebration club later. How about that? I'll show you all eight cards and I'll even let you vote. I'll do like a this or that or, you know, a three-way vote or something. So I think it might be fun. Just to see like maybe... Maybe we could use some strawberries. Yeah. It would be tone on tone or maybe some butterflies. Let's see. I'm looking, but if I don't really have enough, I'm just going to... Um, you know what? I'm just going to go for it and open up the other package. Because my stuff, I have faith all my stuff's going to come. My stuff's going to come on Wednesday, maybe Tuesday. I didn't want to pay for expedited shipping this time. You know what? I thought I just I just didn't do it. All right. So let's this is the Sunny Days Designer Series paper. Here's what it looks like on the other side. So you're going to take out your paper. This paper here from your card on blue card club kit. All right? Dun, dun, dun. We're going to use the sunny piece. We're going to use the pool party piece with the cherries on back. And we're going to use this nice flower piece. All right, so then you're going to take out your card, card base. I'm just going to go ahead and dig into my bags of stuff so I don't have to just keep on, keeping on, keeping on. Let's see. I made myself extra pieces. So you're going to pull this out, the poppy prayed base. Everything is cut for you. It's a labor of love and your little stamped sheet. Okay, your stamped little piece. All right, let's get let's get cranking. There's your card. Let's cut all the pieces we need. So the first piece is going to be easy. Get out your trimmer, and you're going to make that. Just keep, be aware of the way that your pattern goes. So it's going to be four inches wide by five and a quarter, or four inches across. Yeah, wide by five and a quarter long. But you want the pattern to be like this because it's a vertical card. So four by five and a quarter. Don't worry, we're going to write that all down for you. Okay, now the next piece is going to be four and a quarter by, and that, that'll be the width by, let's see, three. So we need three inches here, this way, three inches. I'm just going to put all my scraps back in this bag. I'm going to be able to use them for something. Three by four and a quarter. Okay, how's that working out? So the reason I did it like that is because we'd have a nice big margin. See that? An even margin, but a margin to be able to see this beautiful flower pattern. Okay, so that's that. Now, we're going to take this piece of the pool party, and I should already have a piece. I already have a piece of that, so we don't actually need to take this. So we're going to take this piece here, and we're going to make it an inch. See, an inch high or wide. Ah, da -da. An inch, or did I make it higher? Nope, an inch is good. And that's going to be by four inches wide. Now, what I usually do is just kind of do this and then cut off the excess that I need. So let's go ahead and adhere these pieces together. Instead of trying to use the trimmer to trim it, I get it exact. 
All right, we're out of seal plus refill uh, right now and the seal refill. So you can just use glue if you can't order that. Let's see. But you could definitely put on your wish list for later. And we're going to do something like this, right? About right there. Okay, we're going to have, and just use your little suns to line up. So let's say three suns down or something, right? To line up your, this to be even. Okay, put your adhesive on there. Oops. This seal plus is so strong that sometimes it pulls my paper. But before it rips your paper, just get in there and fix it. It's such strong adhesive. It's great for boxes. But sometimes if you're not careful, it rips your paper. Hey, I just keep it real. I mean, I'm keeping it real. I'm telling you the products. I love this. I love this adhesive, but sometimes it's really too strong. <laughs> Depends on what you're doing. I'm going to have to cover that little blemish up there. So I'm going to put it up a little higher than I was going to originally put it up. And I'm just going to get rid of this extra adhesive. If you can get it quickly, you can get it off. But otherwise, it'll dry like concrete. It's so strong. So I'm just going to get this little bit of extra adhesive off. You know what? I have an adhesive eraser. That might work. Nope, even that doesn't get it off. I do have a ribbon that comes in your kit too, but I don't have any more of that to show you. So that would be a good thing to use to cover this up. Talk about strong adhesive. I'm going to have to cut it off. It won't rub off, so I'm just going to cut it off. See how I'm doing that? Just cut off the adhesive. All right, so now you're going to turn this around like so and cut off the extra piece on the back. Sunny days goes with a bundle. Uh, last night I went over a bundle from the mini catalog and it goes, it coordinates with that perfectly. So this, if you like the whole rain cloud, rainbow type of thing, then you're going to like, like this. All right, so let's go in here and put that on our card, like so. All right, so now we're going to make our watermelons, which are the star of the show. But before that, I need to write down these measurements for you. All right, we have a card that is 11, two, 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 11 inches wide, score at five and a half. And it is four and a quarter inch like that. So this is Poppy Parade. That's your card base. Poppy Parade. Okay, now we have our DSP. Layer one. These are all going to be sunny days. Free. This is free DSP. Free. You can't buy it. So don't say how much does it cost. You can't buy sunny days. It's free, meaning it's part of celebration. So you can only earn it when you spend $50. All right, so let's see. The paper is going to be five and a quarter by four. That is layer one. And then we have layer two, which is going to be three inches wide by four and a quarter. And then we have layer three, which is going to be like that, four inches wide by one inch high. So there's your layers. Take your screenshot. That's how to make this card. The rest of it is we're cutting it by hand. Even if you have a scan and cut, we are doing this by hand. We're going to stamp the watermelons and cut them out with a pair of scissors. Because that's how I had to do it. Because in my club, I told you that you wouldn't need any dies. or <laughs> So I didn't want to, or any, any extra machines. So I'm just going to let this. Go like that. So let me pull this away. I'm done with the trimmer. So let's go ahead and put this little silicone mat down. We're going to do what's called two-step stamping. We're going to open up Poppy Prayed. I do have more Poppy Prayed ink. I just got to re-inker. So if it's not dark enough, we'll, we'll do something about that. We'll re-ink it. And I could show you how I spread my ink. But in the meantime, let's find the watercolor melon. 
we're gonna take we're gonna use a piece with the bite cut out of it one of those and we're gonna use this piece here and we're gonna use the little rind and there is a little speck of glitter how did glitter get on there I have glitter all over my craft room this is called distinctive stamping so the shading is built right into the stamp which is pretty cool so let's put this piece of watermelon like so with the flat side up and we're gonna put the other piece of watermelon on a bigger stamp of black with the flat side up okay and then we'll put the little rind on another stamping block the stamping block has some text on it but we'll do that in a minute so anyway tap 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 and test out your watermelon okay that was pretty light so I'm going to show you how I ink up my stamp pad so when I ink up a new stamp pad not a new pad, stamp pad but one that's pretty dry I just do this little sort of S shape or you know a bunch of drops on it and it doesn't soak in unless you get like a plastic spoon or you know I, I just use a stamping block is what I do so I'm going to take a stamping block and you're just going to push the ink around so plastic spoon or stamping block that got really sucked in there quickly but that's why I ordered a reinker because I usually don't order reinkers unless it's really dry Anyway, that's where you get the even ink around. Get my little basket. Okay, let's try again. Ooh, we have a happy watermelon. All right, our watermelon is happy. Now, we have a couple choices. You can either, we can do like two steps. We can either like stamp off a little bit and make it lighter like so. Or we can just stamp. So we'll try both. We'll stamp once and we'll stamp again. I think we're going to probably use the lighter one. Well, it's still not. I liked it better when we were earlier when it was lighter. Okay, just to give you an idea, these are my samples. You see they're supposed to be a little bit lighter. So we're just trying out different things. You get to see my process of fixing things and troubleshooting. So it's not that it's uneven because of the stamp, by the way. It's that's the way that these are distinctive stamping. So the shading is built into the stamp. Hold it for a few seconds. Okay, I'm kind of liking. Okay, this is better. Okay, the reason it's better when you just stamp onto a piece of paper and not onto this basic way is because this doesn't have good ink absorption and this one does. Okay, so that's why it looks better when you stamp onto the piece of paper first. All right, so we have a good watermelon slice with the little shading built into the watermelon. Now we need some seeds. So we're going to take out our basic black, memento black, and we're making already a big old mess. So fun. Here's our little watermelon seeds. Now you have two, two kinds of seeds. You have a single seed and you have a, three seeds. So be, the combination of both the three and the one will give you a good coverage on the seeds. All right, I'm taking out a little tiny stamping, little tiny stamping block. Okay, put the seeds on the middle for good coverage so they don't wobble. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. All right, and then you just start, then you just start stamping the heck out of the thing. Put some seeds all around like that but now don't put this one in the middle because that's too many seeds maybe just two more seeds like with the little single try the single one oh this is so much fun okay oh you could even add a little seed over there okay i'm getting to the point of having too many seeds on my watermelon then you have to spit them all out right we'll do more seeds in a little bit now we're going to take the shaded spruce open that up and we're going to stamp the rind. All right, let's do, let's get a little piece of paper here. All right, it's okay to just do it as is. It's not too dark for me. I'm just going to get in there and stamp it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. I messed up my watermelon. <laughs> oh, that was funny. All right. It's all good. It's all good. We're going to use this one. All right. And 
All we got to do is put some more seeds on it. So grab my, see, just going to grab my seeds, Bruce. Okay, I don't like that there's a little gap there. Okay, I'm minding the gap. Okay, so this little guy, you're bad. All right, it got in my way. So let me get my baby wipe. Actually, I have a, I have the chamois. So we can use the, we can use my chamois just to get this off. I didn't know that you were jump you were hitchhiking onto another stamping block. So it's all good. We have to open up the black again. Where the heck did you go? No wonder it keeps falling off because it's not sticking to the stamping block. I gotta be careful. It's not sticking. All right. So do your get your seeds inked up there. Okay. And then get your single seed. I'm gonna pull this off for a minute. Get my single seed and just fill in the seeds. All right, good. And I'm just gonna recover this seed because that seed didn't. That's enough seeds because any more, it's dangerous, right? So let's cut this little guy out, and then we're going to do the next watermelon piece because I'm happy with this one. And I just want to leave a little bit of a white border around it. So my trick is when I cut things out with paper and there's a little bit of an edge, I bend the paper as opposed to bending. Right, bend the paper. And then it helps like get the curve instead of bending this, instead of trying to move the scissors, I'd use two hands and I move the paper like this to give it a little bit of a rough edge. Yay for the watermelon piece. All right, now we need another scrap paper and we're gonna do this all again with the other piece with the little, the little piece with the chunk eaten out of it. All right, so let's do this again. Poppy prayed. Piece of scrap paper. Hold it for a few seconds. Okay, that's kind of dark. All right, I'm going to stamp onto the paper first and then try it again. Okay, better. Good. All right, so better. Get the rind. I'm not stamping off the rind. I'm just stamping the rind right on there. So as you can see, the rind fits both. Okay, I gotta, I'm gotta. i getting rid of this so it's even. Getting rid of that scrap there. And some watermelon seeds. So you have like the rind that's the same size for both of those, right? Which is nice. So one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm going to fill in with the one. Isn't it fun that like there's like all this snow in the country and we're making watermelon cards. I think that's cool. I just like to get my little marker sometimes and fix things like my little black marker. Everyone should have a black marker. I think they're only three bucks. So get yourself a black marker. Who doesn't need a black marker? to fix things. Okay, and now again, I'm just gonna cut this little guy out. See, I think it looks better lighter. What do you guys think? Lighter or darker watermelon? This one looks juicier, but I just like the texture when you stamp off onto the sticky note. I'll get into the, the little chunked out piece now. Alrighty. We took a bite out of our watermelon. And even though I can cut this out with the machine, this is just kind of fun when it's a little rough around the edges, like so. 
All right, so those are our embellishments for a card. And now we're going to stick those on our card. We need to do our stamp, though. Let's see what we still need. We still need shaded spruce. We're done with the black, so we can put this one away. We're done with the poppy prayed ink. We can put that one away. Okay, we are we still need this one because that's our sentiment. And we need some, we need to ink up the edge. So watermelon slices. Good. Let me get this. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of this. All right. Pa pool party is next. So pool party is a color. Darker, she likes the right watermelon. Thank you, Jean, for your feedback. So, I mean, either way, just stamp it off, stamp it on. Do whatever you like because it's your card and it's fun to do it the way you want to do it. So I'm going to wipe off this part for a moment just to get this. I just need the stamping block, right? So what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and put this guy back because it's clean. The other ones I'm going to wash, especially the red, the red ones with the poppy parade. I like our stamp cases, how you can just put them right in there to store them. So we're going to stamp. We're going to put a little bit of ink, some pool party ink on there. And we're going to do a little bit of tap, 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 and inking up the edges of our shape. Of our shape, of our shape, which is going to appear. Well, it's probably in my bag here. I have some in my bag. Let's see. I thought I maybe took it out earlier. We'll just we'll just take it out of here. And I, I can also show you how I got the shape because we can punch one. But let's let's just first use the shape we have here. So you're gonna put your little shape down, tap tap tap, and you're gonna just sort of ink up the edge. I'm just using pool party for some dimension. Tap tap tap, tap tap tap, and do that. All right, that's good. Put that off to the side, and I'm going to now show you how I did that. So I have a piece of paper here, basic white, and this is what's called the heartfelt hexagon punch. So I'm just going to get in there and punch a shape. This heartfelt hexagon punch is perfect. It's already, that's in our other catalog. That You can get anything I'm showing you now. So that, I'm just going to tap on it. That is a punch that coordinates with the Heart, heart, heartfelt Hello's stamp set. So all of these stamps in the stamp set that I'm about to use all fit in the shape from the heartfelt hexagon punch. I think this one needs a little more pool party. What do you What do you think? Yeah, a little more pool party. Okay, done with that. Now we still need our shaded spruce. We put this one away and grab my last stamping block and the heartfelt hellos. Okay, this is the one I'm talking about. All six of these stamps from this free stamp set all fit or all will, will all be punched out with the heartfelt hexagon punch. So free with the $50 order. I'm just going to mount that onto a stamping block. Tap, tap, tap. And just, you know, stamp it first on your sticky note. Okay, it's pretty good. It's just not totally crisp. That's what the Stampin' Up! marker sometimes helps me with. If it's not totally crisp, I can always fill it in with a marker. Okay, let's try it. Enjoy your day. Hold it for a few seconds to let the ink absorb. And then don't, don't pull it off. Or it'll smear all over the place. You sort of want to tap it off with your finger now. See? Come off. Be gone. Okay, it looks pretty good. Sometimes I need a marker to fix it. You know, if there's any little... This is just me being a perfectionist. I mean, but, you know, cards are just homemade, so don't worry about it, really. You can use a blender pen to turn any of your ink pads into a marker. So if you don't have your marker collection yet, just don't worry about your marker collection. Just... Work on your marker collection over time, and you can then, like, use your little blender pen to turn any ink pad into a marker. All right. I think there was, like, something on here. 
is what it looks like to me. It's like, it looks like it's, there's like something like dust on there or something. Dust in the wind. We have dust in the wind on our stamp. All right, let's. Uh, see, there's just a little, little thing, little tiny thing on there. All right, good. All right, now we're going to put that away. I'm going to use my little chamois. I love my chamois to clean my hands before I show you, because I have a lot of things to show you. We first have to finish making this project, and then I have a lot of a lot of projects to show you, so I need to clean the ink off my hands, or it'll get all over the card we're making. All right, put that away, and we need we don't need mm, we don't need this anymore because we're using dimensionals. So we need the dimensionals. Okay, we don't need the silicone mat anymore. And we're bringing back the card to finish up. So we first we need an enjoy your day. I like this one better. Put that one right there. Oh, more adhesive. Okay, put that one there. Pop it up with dimensionals. Okay, sort of center it with that piece of basic piece of pool party. Center it on there for contrast. Oh, fun. Okay, now these, I like to add some glitter, and this is where the real magic happens in these. Look how much smoother these are than those. Of course, this was one I had I, before I re-inked my stamping pad. But look how like much smoother the ink is. So what I did to make it smooth is I used my Wink of Stella, the glitter pen. Okay, this is probably running low on glitter. Do I have any glitter coming out the sides? Come on. I can feel it in there. I mean, I can hear it in there. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Well, I have so many of these. You know what? It'll be fun. It will be a good time to open up a new one so you can see how they work when you open them up and how to first open up your Wink of Stella. Those of you in my Card on Blue Card Club, you were all given a Wink of Stella. I think it was a month too. And I try not to recycle crafts for at least a year so you get some special craft. Okay, so I did that quick. All right, let me let me show you what I'm doing. I do it so much. Okay, so you go up, you open it up, right? Like so. Now, in order to get the glitter out, you have to take this ring off. So you take the black ring off and you can toss that away. Or if you're a true crafter, you're going to try to figure out another use for the ring. All right, so you can't bear to throw it away because it's a ring after all. I'm going to get rid of this other one. The other ones, what I do with my old ones is I add, I add re-inker to them. So in other words, I add, okay, then I shake it up, right? And then it tells you to push. Now, it's going to come out like gangbusters. Watch, when it first comes out, see? Just comes out. Now, push, get a little out, and then wait. Push, get a little out, and then wait. And then give it a little shake. Here, it's coming onto the brush. And when it comes onto the, see, now it's coming out, okay. So now you can get it out. And then after that, you don't need to push anymore because it'll just come out. Okay, there it is. Yay, glitter. We love glitter, yes we do. We love glitter, how about you? That should be a cheer for us. So you see how this is gonna make this really smooth now. So watch what I'm doing, I'm avoiding the seeds but I'm putting glitter all over my watermelon. And I have a nice smooth flow on this Wink of Stella. So anyway, what I do with my old ones is I just fill them, I put some re in them, a little bit of alcohol actually. And then I just refill them that way. And I, I have different colors of Wink of Stella that way. So like pool party, um, a crushed curry one, or I think it might be a daffodil delight one, like a yellowish one, a reddish one. So then I have different colors of Wink of Stella. Or you could just refill them 
with like a champagne mist type of thing so that they become like a little glitter pen. Go, Oops, be careful getting the green back in there. Okay, so do the green last because the green does stain this. All right, so look how much better this watermelon looks with the Wink of Stella on it. It really looks watercolored and it's a lot darker. Like Jean said she likes it darker. It does get darker when you put a lot of glitter on it. All right, again, do the red part, the poppy parade part first because once you do the green part, it gets all over your brush. So I like that the texture's already built into the stamp and it's called distinctive stamping, but I still like to add you know, glitter to pretty much everything. You can just watch it transform. It's almost like when you use embossing powder and you heat up something and you just like watch it transform in your in front of your very eyes. That's what this is doing when you're adding the glitter because you're painting over it with another layer. All right, so now I can just do the green. I'm not gonna, after that I do the shaded spruce, I'm not going back to the poppy parade because I don't want to mix the green. All right, happy day. Oh, happy day. All right, using my chamois. Get this all for free. This $60 glass mat studio, if you join my team during celebration. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, two days ago I did a video on this very thing. On all about celebration. Celebrate good times, come on. So I'm going to just put a few dimensionals on my watermelon. Plop them on the card and we're done. And then I could show you the other cards we're making in the series. And I'll even let you pick what's next. But we're not going to do another watermelon card next. We're going to do, you know, first I'll see what you guys comment on and then I'll do a final vote. How about that? So I'm going to show you seven more cards after I say hello. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? Okay, there we go. Something like that. Let's see. Okay, I think this one was down more. Okay, before you push down, kind of get them to align the way you want. Okay, it was more like this. I like the way I had it first. So it's more like this goes that way. And then this is going to kind of go that way. Okay, up a little higher. Now I can push down. Right, once I figure out where they're going to go. And these could even use more glitter. I put glitter on them, but you can barely see the glitter. Because at the time I didn't have a new Wink Costello pen. Oops. Oh, good. Glad that didn't stick too hard. Yay, our card is done. You guys are awesome for sticking with me this long. All right, so I see a lot of votes for the darker watermelon, but I hope now that you see the darker watermelon, well, now that you see what I'm talking about, it got darker when we painted it. So hello, Christine. Nice to see you. Thanks, you guys. There's 26 watching. Thank you for the likes. There's 12 likes on the video. So hopefully you like what you see and are not falling asleep on me there. Hello, Phil from Florida. One of the only warm places in our country. Hello, Melissa. From Texas. Hello, Hilda and Jean and Kathy and Judy from Wisconsin and Kim from Virginia and Bonnie from, oh, she's saying hello from two Kim from Wisconsin. She's not from Wisconsin. Yeah, I don't worry about mistakes, Phil. Life's too short. I'm I'm just not stressed about anything like that. In fact, I've done upside down cards before. Just chop them apart, slap them on another card base, and it's all good. I'm glad you guys are all making friends in the chat here. So I'm glad you like the watermelons. And hello, Rose from Illinois. Hey, it's a party hat with a pom-pom. Thank you, Kathy. Great idea. So turn this into a party hat if you want. Maybe you could put a party hat on one of the snowmen, use the deckled rectangle, because that kind of goes with the deckled look. Make a snowman out of the deckled circles. I mean, not deckled rectangles. Put a party hat on your snowman. Okay, thanks, Melissa. I'm glad you like how I keep it real. Hello, Laura. Phil likes it lighter. Bonnie likes it lighter. Laura likes it lighter. And Melissa despises fuzzy cutting. Yeah, well, you know, I usually do too, but these are such easy ones to cut. Hello, Sandy. Jean likes it darker. All right. Bling Bling Crafters here. Linda from Stamp Cut and Crates here. Karen's here from Minnesota. 
And Bonnie's hungry for watermelon. I understand. So am I. Hello, Sherry from Kentucky. And thank you. All right. Music and crafting in one video. Okay, so you like my horrible singing, but it's all fun. All right, so this is what we're doing. Okay, so when you like something, just kind of type it. And the ones that I see get typed the most, I'm going to do like a runoff vote for the, the last couple cards. So we're going to make all these cards during celebration. Except we're not going to do this one next because we, we are like all watermelon out for now. We have to kind of show showcase different products. But this one, this card is going to be I call it my designer series paper card where I do a panel. It's a card design I go back to over and over again. It'll definitely be in my card recipe book. And we use it a lot on my channel. It's a designer series paper card with panels. And there's some linen thread that you got in your kit to go along with that. All right. So we have tool cards. We have dad and enjoy. So you could call it tool dad card or tool enjoy card. Okay. That's what we're going to call these. If you want to make one of the tool cards. So these, when I say tools, it's from the trusty toolbox. So in your celebration club, you'll get like a package of that. Or we have a love card. So the love card would be with a specialty paper that's so gorgeous called Mostly Adorned. So just call that the love card. Mostly Adorned Specialty Designer Series Paper. We have a sympathy card. Okay. We have a sympathy card. Just call that sympathy. It's just, in, you're in my thoughts. So we have. Tool Dad, Tool Enjoy, Love, Sympathy. And then we have, this is easy. We have an Easter card. We don't have to name the paper, but it, this, is, this, this paper here is called Softly Stippled. I'll show you the paper in a minute. So we have an Easter card with the Flight Nary, or we have a Mother's Day card. So just put mo Mom, Mother's Day. So these are all the cards we're making. This is the celebration cards. So while you're voting, before our runoff election here, we're going to have a runoff election. All right, we're gonna see, you're going to see what's in the Celebration Club. So you already saw the pack of Sunny Day. I had to break into the pack, and I don't really have much paper left to show you, but you get a package of Sunny Days with the things and the card bases. You get a package of Softly Stippled with the card bases and all the pieces you need. You get Trusty Toolbox with the pieces you need and the card bases. You get Flight and Airy Designer Series paper with the pieces that you need. And a packaging item, the scallop gift box. And then you get the mostly adorned specialty paper with the card base. You know, and, and when I say card base, you always get the envelopes you need. So you have enough, you're going to have enough supplies for eight cards, the insides of the cards, the white parts, and the envelopes, and the die cut or punched out shapes, and two packaging items. So you're going to get a packaging item like a scallop gift box, and you'll get another packaging item over here, like this one. This one's called... Delightfully, or delicate details, treat box. You're also going to get memories and more cards. So really, you have enough to make 12 projects. So it's a really good value. And there's also embellishments that come in the kit. I don't have any embellishments to show you, but you're going to get a little sampling of these. I just, I was only able to spend so much money here when I had to, I had to earn these products for you. I spent a small fortune to earn the products for you, but it's all good. You guys, I love you guys. Opaque faceted gems. You're going to get a little 10, 10 of those. I just ran out though. And you're going to get some of this ribbon, this pool party ribbon, a little like a whole yard of the pool party ribbon. But I ran out of that. And then you're going to get little treats. So it's your little bag of treats. You get three little cookies and two mini Tic Tacs. So that's, your, that's called a celebration club. Go to my links and offerings in the description of this video to join the celebration club. All right, we have love, Easter, love. Two, we have an Easter. All right, so one, two Easters, two loves. And hello, Anne from New Hampshire. And another tool, another tool, enjoy. Okay, so we have, it looks like the runoff is going to be, we have three, we have two tools. All right, so we have an Easter, a love, and a tool, and, and the tool, enjoy. Oh, we're not going to, well, we could do either, I'm not sure which tool you picked. Okay, so I'm not sure which tool you picked, so that's not clear. So we'll do a runoff between these two. So let's do the runoff. This is the runoff election because you got a couple votes for the loves and a couple for the tools and a couple for the Easter, but I don't know which tool. So we're going to say, would you rather have Easter or love? This or that? So just vote Easter or love. And then best out of three, and we'll do, okay, we have a love from Christine. We have an Easter and from Karen and an Easter from Phil. So Easter won. So the next card we're making 
is the Easter card in this series, but we're going to make them all. Oh, we got another few votes for Easter. You guys really want the e Easter's not for a while, but you guys really love this flatinary paper, I'm assuming. And I think I might add some bling to these, right? But I, I just, when I get my bling, when it comes in. So this is, again, going to be that special paper. This is fresh freesia, and it's the special paper. I mean, special meaning celebration paper. All right, so now I'd like to, so now that you know what we're making in our celebration club, and now that you know how to sign up for that, I have a couple other things going on on my channel this month. It is January 2024, in case you're watching this later. So if you are seeing this movie, not movie, video, I guess it's a movie. We can call it a movie. If you're watching this video before January 10th, you can sign up for my Perennial Postage Card on Blue Card Club kit. And in that Card on Blue Card Club kit, you're going to have all the supplies to make eight cards. Two Mother's Day cards, right? Two. And you get this paper. This is the way the packages come. You'll get this Perennial Lavender with some specialty paper. So you're going to make two Mother's Day cards, two You Mean the World to Me cards. I don't have any card bases cut right now, so I'm just showing you. Okay, so then you have, then you're gonna make two. I can't thank you enough cards, and two. Your simply marvelous cards, and then you're gonna be getting the masterfully made designer series paper, some more specialty paper. You're gonna get a bingo card, Regency Park. This is an extra bonus paper, and you're going to get in your card on Blue Card Club. You're gonna get some paper butterflies. Some and I ran out of this gorgeous grape because it's retired ribbon, but you'll get a substitute, maybe glittered organdy. Some of you will get the gorgeous grape and the pool party ribbon, and you get some embellishments. And then you get those die cut shapes. All the little. Okay, can't find the die cut shapes right now, but you get some mini mentos and some things like that. Okay, so that's the card on blue card clip. All right, next thing going on in my channel is we have the Fluffiest Friends Workshop Series. And that kit's pretty epic. My mom made bags to go with the kit. And if you missed it, just watch video one where we made these, this card. Happy Valentine's Day, your sweetest honey. So we used Fluffiest Friends and we used the dies and we used Be My Valentine stamp set. So I don't have, I don't have the kit here on the table to show you, but that kit's pretty cool. That kit comes with like r more ribbons and adhesives and embellishments and lots of designer series paper. And you'll get full sheets of card stock in there. So anything you're interested in like that, I have going on in addition to a designer series paper share and a deluxe paper share where you get to sample all the papers from here and all the papers from here, which I'm about to show you this one, all the papers from here. So this is what's going on on my ch channel this month. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. This is the Paper Chef. Have a great evening.